Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is mail call time and man oh man am I excited. You probably already read the video title by now. This is my very first Benchmade knife. And you guys know, well, maybe you don't know, but I've been getting a little bit into knives. Some of you have noticed that I've been using different knives now for my unboxings. And so uh, this is my very first Benchmade knife. I've heard a lot of good things about Benchmades and I've never owned it because I never understood the price point. But then when I saw this particular knife i thought wow this thing just looks so beautiful it's not the custom version it is a production model but it is by benchmade and i thought well i have to give benchmade a try at least so i'm gonna cut all the banter and just get this out of the box so that i can kind of share this experience with you guys because yeah you know i like to document my experiences so here we go I've not seen a Benchmade box before, but this looks pretty cool. Benchmade Life Sharp Service and Warranty. I've heard good things about the Benchmade warranty, but I don't know if it actually works here in Singapore. If you guys are wondering how I get my blades, I generally buy blades from Blade HQ because they seem to be a little bit cheaper there. So I bought this from Blade HQ. But the thing about buying knives from a US-based site is that sometimes they don't offer international shipping and so I have to use a freight forwarding service and so I use Com Gateway. And because of that, I'm not sure if I still qualify for the warranty, but hey, it's all good. Sometimes I get knives locally, like from Urban Tool House and stuff, but they don't have the latest and greatest models and this one really caught my eye. So here we go, this is the Benchmade 486 Saibu or Saibu in Japanese. And Saibu actually means details. So I've got to get rid of this tape right here before I can open it up. So I've got to get my knife again, so here we go. Okay, moment of truth everyone, my very first Benchmade knife. Wow. Uh, well... I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps because I'm just so excited. So, yep, here we go. Oh, I've got some blue loop, that's what I use. Okay, cool. And it comes in a little pouch. Wow. Okay, this is smaller than I expected. This is a Axis Lock knife. And I apologize if you see this actually shifting around. I don't have anything to hold it down now. Maybe I should have put a rougher mat underneath. I'm sorry guys if this thing keeps shifting around. I've not met with this issue before because I usually use a cutting mat underneath but right now it's just bare with a table and it's really smooth. So I think that's my own mistake. Sorry guys. But yes, Benchmade and this is my very first Axis lock knife and I've never handled an Axis lock knife before. So right now I'm going to make a disclaimer. I am by no means a professional knife reviewer. I don't really think that I'm fit to review knives because I'm totally new to the knife game. But I've watched a ton of knife videos and I know that a lot of you will be interested in knowing the details of this knife. So here we go. This is the Benchmade 486 Saibu. It features black G10 scales as well as stabilized Kokobolo wood inserts like that. And it's got very nice window slots. And yes, this is a Seiichi Nakamura collaboration with Benchmade, looking almost like the custom version. It's got a bamboo styled backspacer. And on the back, we have a pocket clip. It looks to be a deep carry pocket clip. And this clip is reversible. So you've got tip up carry, left-handed or right-handed. And I'm gonna just flick open the blade. Let's see how this goes. That's my first time opening up the blade. Oh, wow. Looks a little bit dusty, but you know, can't be helped. And this is a 20 CV satin finish drop point blade. Now it's also got some accented Kokobolo wood inlays for the thumb studs, which is pretty cool. And I've never ever used a access lock before, so this is gonna be my first time. I guess you're supposed to pull it back. Ah, I see. So you pull it back, then it closes. That's nice. So open it up and then close it. Wow, that's cool. Wow, I actually felt that, that, that snap. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Uh, I, I definitely got to get used to this. So, can I flick it open? Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> Whoa, that was cool. That was so cool. That was so cool. I'm going to try it with my middle finger. Here we go. Oh, that's awesome. I just got to take note that I don't keep my finger on the access lock when I'm trying to deploy it. Because this might happen, see? And then it might... I might be putting pressure on the access lock. So taking a slightly closer look at the blade, we have the Benchmade logo or insignia etched there. And for some reason, the blade doesn't look satin finished. It looks stone washed. And on the flip side, we actually have Nakamura's insignia. It says first production. I've got number 221 out of 1200. So first production run. And it says the quality of the steel, 20 CV. Okay, so other things that I know knife enthusiasts are interested in finding out is the centering of the blade. Pretty good centering. It's not perfectly centered. As you guys can see, it's leaning a little bit towards the show side. Just very slightly, but centering's pretty good. Honestly, I don't think I've ever received any production knife with a perfect centering except for just one pilar out of the two that I've got. 
let's see looks to be pretty solid here the stock pin looks good backspacer is very very nicely done i like all these accented details but yeah i mean this this is won me over in terms of looks like I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. I was like, what? So I'm gonna put it down here and give you guys a quick size comparison. Let me just get the box out of the way. And pardon me guys, I'm new to knives, so I don't really have a lot in my collection, but here you go. This is a CRKT Pilar. And the Pilar is a little bit smaller. You can see that in terms of the overall length, the Saibu is slightly longer than the Pilar. And yes, this has been customized by myself. Stone washed everything, put my name there, etched it myself as well. Quite proud of this quite proud of this i must say and then for all the edc addicts this is a key bar and for all the spinner heads this is a stubby so there you go this is the size comparison a stubby a key bar and a crkt pilar which i think should be a pretty common model out there now a little bit more specs for you of the saibu since i'm talking about size and all that first of all the blade grind it is a drop point flat grind and i'm getting my details off the blade hq website and the blade length is about 2.98 inches just under three inches which makes it legal in most places so that's a good thing the overall length of the knife is 6.79 inches and you can see that is just super awesome i love it i love Love it. Now the inner frame or the liner here is made of stainless steel. It's got a nice lanyard hole at the back here so I could put my lanyard through later on. And I do believe that is all the details that you guys are interested in. It is an axis lock folding knife. I might have to re-loop that because I kind of want a knife that kind of drops. You know what I mean? Like I want it to just really just drop. Yeah. Oh, oh, one more detail that I want to share with you guys. I believe that the washers are phosphor bronze washers you guys can see the color difference in there right yep phosphor bronze washers guys now the next thing i know that you guys are interested in seeing is how it looks when you actually grip it so you can have a grip like this pretty comfortable you got this little cutout over here that acts almost like a finger choil and up here nice ridge for my thumb to rest on pretty good i can't really go all the way forward because you know there's no finger choil here what's a two different grips called again i apologize i forgot what it's called forward grip or something like that yeah it's just a lot of new technical terms to me so i'm just learning and i hope that you guys don't mind but yep grip it like that pretty comfortable in hand i'm just gonna show it to you upside down this way so yep Nice, interesting pivot design though. Like on the other side, on the show side, the pivots are kind of recessed in with a little dot and I've not seen that before out of all the knives that I have and I don't have that many. But yeah, this is the Benchmade Nakamura 486 Saibu. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I believe that that is all that I want to showcase to you guys. I'm very happy with the purchase so far. This cost me $212.50 from the Blade HQ website and I'm digging it very, very much. I like it a lot. My very first Benchmade knife. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I buy knives based on the way they look. My lifestyle, my work and all the other hobbies that I do do not require me to be outdoors. So I'm not really an outdoorsy person. I like going around. I like traveling. I like visiting new places and learning about new cultures, but I'm not an outdoorsy kind of person. I don't go camping, although I have finished my military training here in Singapore and that was a long time ago. So yes, while I do understand what outdoor life is like, it is not part of my lifestyle. So yes, I make my purchases based on the way they look. I don't really go so much for materials and quality of materials. I just care really about the way it looks. And this is also my very first G10 scale knife. So it's interesting. It feels really good. I like this this texture there's a very very slight texture to it and it is slightly matte it looks almost like carbon fiber it offers a very very comfortable grip yep and that is it thank you so much for sharing in this size of my life everyone i really appreciate the constant support and well, uh, I don't think that I have enough experience or the caliber to review knives, but I just wanted to share with you guys my very first Benchmade knife. If you are interested in getting a Benchmade Saibu for yourself, I will put a link in the video description down below to the Blade HQ sales page, even though at this point of time, it is out of stock. But, but you can sign up for alerts and they will email you whenever it's back in stock. So that's a pretty cool nifty function. And that's it, everyone. Thank you so much once again. And I will catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Till then, everyone. Gaga. I thought I'd give you guys a quick update to what I did with the Saibu. So I cleaned it out, removed all the gunk, I redoed it, and also I flamed the backspacer just so I could get a kind of like a bronzish kind of tone. And I love it. I love this particular tone because I can't handle brass. And I like the bronze tone and I think that the bronze goes really well with the knife. So check it out. my little piggy as well. 
and now that I've basically relooped it, the access lock is awesome. Now I can do this now. I'm super happy with it. Now, time to show it out to Tetris. What the fuck you brought? <laughs> oh my god, this pig is so cute. It's the Monster Hunter pig. That's right. Oh. <laughs> it's nice. I've me to this because I think it matches. Yeah, it does. Oh my god, it's nice. Well, let me show you. This, this X is not right, you can do this. You just pull it. You just pull it out. And then when you close it, you just... That's cool. Oh, cool. So clearly, it's our first time ever handling an Axis lock knife. My first bench made. Oh, cool, oh, This is better than gravity chop. It's damn crazy. Yeah, I know. It's damn nice. Also, just in case I ever get bored of this color, I can just easily polish it off. Just grab a buffing wheel, a buffer wheel on my Dremel, put some polish in and just polish it right off. So that's the, the thing I really love the most about flaming stuff because now I'm able to get this color. I don't have to anodize it and it's the tone that I really wanted. I wanted this coffee, bronzish kind of color. That's all for the update. I'm enjoying the bench mate so far. Just gotta break in the axis lock switch <laughs> till it feels a little bit easier to handle. But right now it's it requires two fingers at least, or maybe because I'm not used to it.